Welcome back here to Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan. Brad and I are actually going to be going out to Yifki today to take a bunch of those fuel drums out for our helicopters. So Andrew got back late last night. He didn't have time to empty all these. These are just empty drums here. So we've got to get these out and load four more full drums for my flight today. While Hook and Sten load up the other two drums to get loaded in, I'm gonna go ahead and start at my walk around. Andrew dip for me, dip the fuel to figure out how much it is. We're gonna get the fuel truck over here, get that fueled up. Brad just pulled his in and out so he can get his fueled up as well. And uh, 7.30 now, we gotta get out of here by 8.30. Not really any earlier because if we get out there too early, there's always clouds in the circuit and then we can't land. All right, I've got two straps per two drums. Now, these things are only rated for 100 pounds. So basically, these huge straps are only holding it for in flight, so they're not rolling around. If I was in an accident, they'd rip out of the ground really fast. That's why we have this huge net on here with all these ropes. And the net is what would be keeping me safe from having these <laughs> come up into the cockpit if I did have an accident or go off the runway or something like that. They're just about finished up. We'll jump in and I'll tell you what my plan of action is now. Brad is not going now, and I'll tell you why. Just about ready to go, and Titus reminded me I don't have my fuel ramps yet to roll the drums out. There goes MAF right there. So we're gonna get those loaded, and then I'm out of here finally. All right, so let's get started. Let's go ahead and do my flow check real quick, make sure all my switches are where I want them. Make sure nothing is popped on my circuit breakers. Engine's on, fuel pump on. My fuel on and low start. We'll let our oil pressure get in a little bit before we add our fuel in. And then fuel flow is coming up. NG is coming up at a nice steady rate. ITT is coming up at a nice steady rate. I watch that little white needle to see how fast it's going up. I'm not really concerned as much about the numbers as I am how fast that's going because you're going to see a little trend a lot faster than you're going to be able your brain is going to be interpolate different numbers all right once titus has unplugged our start battery that just prolongs the battery life that's all it does so as props coming in let's go ahead and get our weight and balance put into our g1000 we'll switch over to pounds for this one we've got 1674 pounds of cargo our empty weight is 4280. Our fuel is 1090. I added another 20 pounds on because I had those extra 10 kgs available. Now you can see down here at the bottom, I've only got one kg available. We're still within the envelope, just barely. We're right at 7250. This says 7253, so we're within 10 there. All right, our flight plan. We'll come on down to Goroka Yifki. And we are heading out at 12,000 feet today, starting at 5,000. At our depart, one POV, 12,000, and send. That just lets our computer here know that I am now leaving. Croak Tower, November 10 Kilo, request taxi, Yifki, one POV. November 10 Kilo, Croak Tower, morning taxi, two runway one, two and left, and the best track lineup, units one zero two one, time check. Two six enough. One zero two one clear to back track lineup. One seven left. November Tango Kilo. Well, it's perfectly clear right above us. We've got low fog at the end of the runway. Let me just see if I can just do a left hand turn out of here rather than going through the whole instrument procedure to get out of here. Uh, no. <laughs> I wanted to, but no. So let's go ahead and put that in. We'll do the gas at departure. There we go. Which is an instruments. 
Um, we are going to be rotating at 63 knots and 75 if we have to come back in. I just know because we're full up. Our flaps are set at 20. We'll wait till those before we flip the switch though. Our trims are all set up where we would like them. Full right rudder and basically the top of the T on the elevator. We'll be 50 knots by our taxiway or else we'll stop on the runway. After takeoff, we'll pitch for 85 knots considering EPL, considering feather. Probably because of the fog, I'm going to go to the left. There's a little bit lower in terrain, some valleys, and there's also um, the Highlands Highway road that we could potentially go off. So it's just a little bit off to the left. I'll pull off and shut off. Emergencies masters, crack my door. All right, flaps are set, indicated, and verified at 20. Igniters and, li and lights are done. November Tango Kilo, ready for departure. November Tango Kilo, runway 17 left. Make a right turn, clear for takeoff. Uh, 17 left, right turn, clear for takeoff. November Tango Kilo. Ignition condition flaps 20, fuel and harnesses. Checklist is complete. 1990, rotate 63. All right, torque is set. There's actually 1450, there's 720. It's going a little bit over 720, so we're gonna bring it back just a tiny bit. There's 50 and continuing. There's rotate at 63. I feel heavy today, watch out bird. You know what, we might be able to almost outclimb it, not quite, but we're just pitching up to our 73 knots for our best angle of climb. Oh, not going to work. <laughs> Let's just lower it right back down to 7.5 degrees on the attitude indicator. My speed's up. There's 10 degrees of flaps. There's over 90, we're starting to break out now. 91, so let me just lower the nose so I get that speeds up. There we go, there's 10, or zero degrees of flaps. Perfectly clear, just like I thought. So we'll put the flight plan back in and bring our prop on back to the bottom of the end, which gives us 2,000 RPM, or very close. And we'll head on back down here to our flight plan. There we go. All right, how are we gonna get out of the valley now? We've got low clouds on all the ridge tops up to probably 9,000 looks like the water bung gap which is right around 8,000 is clear so I'm going to track for that pitch at 100 knots just so I'm getting my best rate of climb by the time I get up there we're already at 6,300 so there should be no issues Grokka Tower November Tango Kilo departed 3-1 tracking 284 on climb 12,000 Garumbin 5-4 November 10 kilo on climb 12,000, 15 miles, contact Morse B, 120, decimal 1, HF 6598. 120, 6598 at 15, November 10 kilo. Well, I don't know if you guys can see, but we've got, what I'm looking for here is, I'm looking for basically a sharp edge on the ridge top. That lets me know that I'm seeing the actual top of the mountain and not just like kind of mixed all in. So. And then I'm also seeing clouds on the other side of these mountains. So I'm at 7,100 now. Looks like there's a lot of clouds on the other side. But what we can do here is also just flip our terrain on. So red, you're dead. Yellow, you're basically within 100 to 1,000 feet. I'm tracking here for the water bung, which just means like where the waters all come together. And we should be able to get through there, come around the corner and then head up near Chembu. Water bung there, I'm just coming off to the right side of it. That's typically where I go through the water bung. So it's actually kind of in between the Dolo Pass and the water bung. But looking through here, I'm seeing blue skies on the other side with a low lining kind of cloud, just like I'm seeing right here. I'm gonna turn our terrain awareness system off so we're not getting yelled at. And I'm coming up to the edge of the mountain so that at all times I can head out here. I've got enough space off to the right where if I needed to break off to the right and get out, if for some reason I'm getting up close and realize I can't clear it safely, I always have an out, always have an out. All right, it's 100% clear on the other side. 
I can drop down low, it looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue. Bring our torque on back to 1250 until we get on the other side and then we can start climbing up to 12,000. It's pretty crazy, but I could pretty much do this whole flight at 8,000 or below. There's one section where we get close to Yifki that actually the ground I think comes all the way up to like 8,300 feet that we have to fly over. And it's like people are living up there. That's maybe why I made such a big deal of that. 500. Because we're going, there's a bunch of mountains that are over 8,000. But like there's people like this, like it's just kind of like a big, kind of a plain area. It's pretty wild. All right. If I go straight ahead, I've got red, you're dead. So I'm not going to be able to do that unless I start climbing up. I don't know if I'm going to be able to climb quick enough to be able to do that or if I should just stay low and go around. Well, let's just go ahead and climb on up. I think I can climb on up. We'll add our torque on up, bring our ITT up to 720 for our climb. There we go. And pitch on up to about 12 degrees initially. Just start bleeding our airspeed off. Once we get down to about 100, then we'll just lower the nose so that we can just maintain that 100 knots going to give us our best rate of climb, which is the most amount of altitude and the shortest amount of actual time. If I wanted to, what I could do is do 20 degrees of flaps, pitch up for 73 and get my best angle of climb, which is the most amount of altitude and the shortest distance. So if you're trying to climb over a cloud, you don't have a lot of space, then that's what you're going to want. But I think at this rate, I think I'm still going to be able to climb right over top of this, so I don't need to do that. Mars B, good morning, 120.1, November Tango, Kilo Transfer. Throw our autopilot on. All right, he's not hearing me on that. We'll switch over to HF. Mars B, 6598, November Tango, Kilo Transfer. November Tango, Kilo, this must be good. Good morning, no joy, 120.1, currently 15 miles. To the west, Garoka passing 9,500 on climb 1, 2,000. Estimating overhead, Jeromben 5-4. Number 10 kilo on climb 1, 2,000. Get a QNH 1008, because estimate north of Beamhagen. Estimating north of Beamhagen on the hour. Yeah, Victor, November, take a kilo. We're about ready to connect right here into our magenta brick line. And once we head up here and get up to Garumbin, then we're going to be switching over to Hagen Tower, because you can see a little dotted line right there. We'll be going through their airspace. And then after that, it's on to Yifki another maybe half hour or so. Hagen Tower, November, take kilo. November Tango Kilo, Hagen Target. Good morning, November Tango Kilo, Grumbin this time, maintaining 1 2000. Estimating north of beam 5 Niner, Grumbin 0 2. For correction, fire gap 0 2. November Tango Kilo, copy the Hagen QNH 1022. Traffic is Kilo Sri Lima. Heading up 1 2 now, again for more speed. On departure, one nine thousand one seven will be on the left end. Call again, uh, North of Beam, Ikeru. Copy traffic, call again, uh, North of Beam, no, good, thank you. Basically, Kilo Sierra Lima is departing here in Mount Hagen. He's going to be coming Ninja, off Ninja, this way. Ninja, Kilo Sierra Lima, November Tango Kilo, correction, Kilo Sierra Lima will be five miles left of track. Should be no conflict, no over Kilo. Like I was saying, he's going to be coming up here and then he's just going to be basically going down the Wagi, the same way I did. 
He's coming through the gaps right down there. He's just now taking off. I'm pretty much at the airport almost right now, so I'm at 12,000. I don't think it's going to be a conflict. Pocket Tower, November Tango Kilo, north of Beam, estimating fire 02 and Yeski 33. November Tango Kilo, copy direction, traffic is closer to the ATR. Again, for open Amanda, past the group, we'll be on descent 2000, estimating over DK02 next hour and DV810 miles to left and right of track. Contact most of the end of Bayern 128.5, no contact 653. Copy, Kilo Sierra, Vector 1285 or 6538 in the buyer, no, from Nine Kilo. Warsby 1285, November Tango Kilo transfer. November Tango Kilo, mostly go ahead. November Tango Kilo, buyer gap this time, 1-2000. Estimating Yipke 3-4, copy Kilo Sierra, Victor. November Tango Kilo, area QNH 1008. Additional traffic is Mike of the Kilo Sesta Carver and Departed Telephone Info Hagen. Right. Above 1,000, pass Le Brock at time 5-5, and estimate Hagen to 3-3-0. Copy additional Mike of the Kilo, November Tango Kilo. We're approaching our top of descent here. We're just about 12 minutes out, so really not that much further to go. I'll show you on here, though, because what we're looking ahead here is just a bunch of low-lining, kind of broken clouds, maybe scattered, but probably more realistically kind of scattered to broken. So anyway, we've got a bunch of all of that all through here. That little red X right here is where we're going. So what I thought I'd do for today's flight, rather than just going over top of it and then just up kilo, November, up tango, dropping it down really fast, uh, uh, what I thought I'd do is i just follow this Lagaipe River right here all the way down because it's a stunning valley. I mean, it's very tight. Right when you get close up to Yifki up here, and when you get up close, right up in this area, it is super tight and it's just absolutely stunning. So I know you guys are going to enjoy that. So we'll drop on down probably just a little bit before that. And I think once we get into the valley, all those clouds should be probably on the sides and we should have no issues getting in that way. Now that we're just 10 minutes out, let's go over our arrival. We're coming in here to Yifki. It's 580 meters long. Touchdown zone is 3140. We're gonna go all the way down to 4300 feet because this little ridge right here, I need to be at 4,300 feet to get over top of that safely. Not really the standard circuit. We want to be turning final 3,650 and we'll be 3,800 turning base. It's a one-way airstrip, 6% slope on touchdown. Pretty nice gradual going up. It's a little bit undulating part way up. And that's what it looks like from the air. So yeah, beautiful place, beautiful valley with kind of how the clouds are here. I'm expecting maybe just a 1-1 one, one cloud in the circuit, but shouldn't be cloudy enough to where it's actually making any problems for me. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and drop on down now. We'll drop on down at 1,000 feet per minute. They're heading and we're gonna go ahead and just turn off this way a little bit. You can see how all this little light area, that's actually where the valley is. Our fuel selectors are on, our TAWs we're going to disable for now so that we don't have... Probably 1021, thanks very much. Our landing weight's going to be, well, about 6,900 pounds, so 73 knots. Our lights and inlet, we'll go inlet now, we might as well throw our light on. If we have to go around here, let me show you. We have this river right here, and that's where our go-around is. So once we're past the river, then we're committed to land. And what I mean by that is, there, it might look like there's a lot of space on these wide-angle lenses. Just wondering if you guys see the. But the reality is, is there's just not enough space to be able to do a safe go-around, or not even a safe, just go around at all. Especially with how heavy I am, I'm 6,900 pounds coming in, and uh, yeah, so we're basically 
Just doing a right hand turn back out the valley and following the river. As I'm approaching any valley when there is a bunch of clouds, not that there's a bunch today, but there's a few clouds out on the scattered mountains, what I do is position myself so that I always have an easy out. Today I can see, you know, a good 10, 15 miles ahead of me. But if this was a lot of clouds in here, I'd be moving all the way to the left side so that I could make a right hand turn out. Like we were saying earlier, there's always, you always have to have an out in every situation. It's gonna keep you alive and it's gonna lower your stress levels. <laughs> And once you can learn these different things to help lower your stress, because I don't think I've talked to a pilot yet that's flown in Papua New Guinea when they were learning all the different intricacies of flying in Papua New Guinea that was not stressed for the first year of flying. Once you can get past that and start learning these things, then you can really enjoy flying in Papua New Guinea. But like I said, I don't think I've talked to one pilot yet that's like, yeah, man, my first year flying here was so stressful. <laughs> I know mine was. Look at these little places they've cut out, little huts on top of just the most incredible views. Wow, that's awesome. We've got little tiny houses down here. That's just so wild to think. And it's just so steep. And they've, so what you're seeing here is you got a couple of trees and things like that that have been cleared out. It's not um, logging or anything like that. They're clearing it out for their gardens. But I mean, just these valleys and gorges going up with waterfalls everywhere. It's just absolutely beautiful here. All stations, Yifki 1285, November Tango Kilo 10 miles to the east of Yifki 4500. Circuit time, Yifki 3-4. We'll do OBS on runway 110. We've got two valleys. We've got one valley here and then the next one up there. We want the one that has the river coming out. They both look very similar, but one is a false valley. So it just goes up and then you can't get in there. The next one with the river is the one we want. Here is my valley. Looks like the circuit looks like it's pretty much open. Got a couple clouds in there, but they're definitely higher than I need to worry about. Yeah, the rest of the circuit's all completely wide open, so that's awesome. And there's the river. There's our 4,300 feet which we need to get over top of this ridge over here. We'll just hold this, do a nice turnaround over top of the airstrip so everybody knows that I'm here so they can get the dogs off or anything like that. We want 73 on final, 83 on base, and 93 on downwind. I'm gonna slowly pull my power out now. Looks like I don't see anybody on the runway. Pull our power on all the way back, so our torque is down to probably around 500. Prop forward. Bunch of villages cut out over here. Those are all fairly new. There used to be some over here, but now those ones aren't really even there. That's wild. Go 10 degrees of flaps. Hold our 4,300 feet till we get over top of these treetops. Top and harness is done. 500. Orsby 6538, November Tango Kilo in the circuit. Yifki report after landing. November Tango Kilo. 3800 turning base. We want 93 here on downwind. We want 93 here on downwind. We've got 95 now. Let's pull a little bit of power out. That'll slow us down. There's our 3800. About 83 now, or 84, so really close. 500. Turning final 3650 at the second ridge. Five hundred. Full flaps, checklist is complete. Slow into 73 knots.
front of are committed. Winds five knots cross, one one knot tailwind. Nope, one two knots headwind. Everything looks good. We are committed. Four fifty on the descent. We're not crosswind. Five fifty on the descent. Six fifty on the descent. Now back to five fifty. Match the slope, pull the power. Everybody always wonders what this is. This is my seatbelt lock so I can move forward and get more straight up and down when we're going up a hill. It flaps up. I unload these, load up those empty drums right in front of me on the ground. Uh, so, me losing in love, me kiss him one plus C, that's all, blow on him, Brad, by come two. That's all, time me lose him Goroka, I'll send him some schedule, like, time me cut up the balloon straight and talk, hey, Brad, no, by, by, uh, no, 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 come today, by come tomorrow. So, me got one plus seat, oh, no, got two plus seats, he stop. I'm going to go front, I'm going to go underneath. So I'm going to talk about bread pinnies. I'm going to kiss him Tupla tomorrow. So, you think one of them? Tupla by go today, or I'll get the three plus by go tomorrow, one time bread? No, one time. One plus no, no. One plus tomorrow, I'm not joking. Oh, we're going to kiss him Tupla today. Yeah, oh, Tupla. Tupla today. Tupla now. Tupla now. And one plus tomorrow. Yes, I'm joking. Am I right? Nice. Okay, oh, or I'll get that can go tomorrow one time, Brad, in one kind, so uh, you think one him. I'm alright, I'm alright. No, no, no. I don't blow. Two blow by school now. Now, one blow or two blow. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'll get that you. Me go ready, Moka, go. Alright. Nah, I don't know. Okay. Two blow, okay. There we go, got those unloaded. I've got two passengers going back. I was hoping to get three out of here today, but Brad was gonna bring my other seat. I guess I'll have to get the other two tomorrow. Now there's four. 
This is just the way it is. Like I said, it's ever changing as a bush pilot here in Papua New Guinea. Every single day, what you think you're gonna do might not be actually what you're gonna do. I'm gonna load my passengers up. We're gonna get back to Garoka. Thanks guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to check out some links down below. I've got some amazing deals going on this month for my Patreon. If you join as a patron, a bunch of free stuff, sunglasses, my coffee table book, featuring a bunch of places here in Papua New Guinea, all that kind of cool stuff. So, well, guys, thank you. Hope to see you guys next time. See you then.